passengers with information about onboard facilities. All right, so uh, yeah, there is a lot of talking in this mission. Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we are back in Titanic VR, and today we're going to be checking out the Stern. It will be the last mission before we check out Sandbox Mode. So yeah, guys, let's get into the video. Sedna, this is CCGS Wilson. This is Sedna. Go ahead. Over. We should be coming up on the Stern now, Dr. Lynch. About 200 meters and closing. Thanks, Gene. I'll let you know when it starts to show up on my map. Great. Excited to be back? Yeah, it's been a long winter. Glad to be back in the driving seat. Getting bored with the new toys in your lab at the university? <laughs> I appreciate all the funding we received after finishing the Henderson job. The attention generated was great for the department. It's just nice to be back out in the field again. Good to hear. Do you need a refresher with the controls after all this time off? Alright, so we're not going to need a refresher for these controls because, um... We just played a mission like two weeks ago where we uh, we went down to the ocean floor and actually that's where we found Henderson. Um, so yeah, if you missed that, go ahead and take a look at the top right corner. There will be a link to that video. But nope, we're not going to need a refresher, so let's click no. That's all right. I'm fine. It hasn't been that long. Good. How far are you from the stern now? You must be almost ready to disengage autopilot. Uh, just reaching the ocean floor now. Okay. Autopilot is disengaged. You'd better place a marker before we head too far. Marker's been Interact placed. Interact with the button in front of the map to place the point. You can head towards the reciprocating engines then. The location is marked on your map, and the mission log has been updated. So, this is a photography mission? Yeah. We've been contracted to photograph a bunch of locations around the stern wreck. We have a couple of side tasks to carry out while we're here, too, but I'll let you know as we get to them. I don't think I've seen many photos of the stern. Yeah. There aren't many photographs of the stern, as it's not as accessible or photogenic as the bow. It's a bit of a mess. The stern suffered a lot of structural damage as it sank, so most of the interior decks collapsed, and the starboard side is missing hull plating. But even through all the destruction, quite a few interesting features survived. So we'll be focusing on capturing these on camera. Hmm. Historians have learned a lot by studying the differences in damage and deterioration between the bow and stern sections. The photographs we take today will help experts monitor the rate of decay for different areas. Now, I should mention that there's going to be a lot of dialogue in this episode, and the reason that that is is because this mission was released after the game was released. Uh, the Stern actually took a bit longer to complete, but when they did, they had to bring all the actors back, and they had to add a bunch of information. They crammed it all into this one mission, so there's not going to be a lot of talking from me, but uh, you'll be able to hear the characters speak. So let's go ahead and move forward, and I can already see some wreckage over here, including a deck uh, winch and looks like uh, some shell plating or a roof section. All right, I can see it up ahead. The engines are massive. These two reciprocating engines weigh about 900 tons each and stand just over nine meters tall. They were powered by the steam from the boiler rooms and turned the two side propellers. They also powered the turbine engines which turned the central propeller. Looks like the upper decks have collapsed and draped over the cylinders. Yeah, what used to be the first and second class kitchen galley is covering the starboard side, and parts of the sea deck are laying on the port side. Whoa, what a mess. I think I'm close enough for a photo. Great. You'll need to deploy the ROV and use the camera. Ah, Predator. If you look up, you'll find a set of VR goggles and a control panel. To deploy the ROV, Look at the VR goggles with your mouse, and then left-click to use. Alright, so let's go ahead and deploy the ROV. Has anything changed on the ROV since I last operated it? Yeah. It's had a few upgrades thanks to the additional funding. Top-quality transmitters have been fitted, so you shouldn't have any issues going out of range of Sedna. 
Other than that, the movement controls are still the same as the submersible, and the control diagram still appears if you hold down the info button. Great. And the camera? The camera and storage compartment are accessible through the ROV menu. You can open the menu by pressing and releasing the info button. Then interact with the camera icon with the laser pointer and left click to use. So as you can see we got the camera out and one thing that I am noticing is that there's some significant quality changes from the last episode we did, which was mainly focused on the bow, and uh, this episode, things uh, look a lot more crisper and less fuzzy, uh, which is a little interesting, but we're going to go ahead and take a picture here. Right. I've taken a photo. What's next? Get out of camera mode by pressing and releasing the info button again. From this menu, you can also see the ROV's map, with your next goal location and mission log visible. You should head towards the second class entrance on the boat deck. Can I get there in the ROV or do I need to bring the submersible? Up to you, really. The range on the ROV is enough to cover the entire stern. But you might like to use the submersible to light up your photographs better. To get back into the submersible, press the return button. Right. I'll head to the second class entrance now. You might like to swing past the starboard side before you head up to the boat deck. You can kind of see the turbine and dynamo engine through the missing hull. You'll need to be at ground level to look in. Just forward of the strip of boat deck hanging down. Ah, nice. The dynamos generated all the electricity on board, right? Yeah. Titanic had four steam-driven generators that powered the lights, heating, fans, Marconi radio equipment, clocks, telephones, cranes, and elevators. She also had two backup generators on D-Deck for emergencies, and they were run every night, just in case. Titanic really was a state-of-the-art ship with all the latest conveniences. What's so special about the second-class entrance? Why are we heading there? The Olympic-class liners were the first to provide second-class passengers with an elevator, and the elevator equipment can be seen at the second-class entrance. Ah. The elevator ran through the central well of the forward second-class staircase and accessed the boat deck through to the F deck, skipping A deck. An elevator steward was allocated to each of the four elevators on board. They manually moved the elevator up and down the shaft using a lever connected to the motors. A good steward could stop the elevator level with each deck and assisted passengers with information about onboard facilities. Alright, so uh, yeah, there is a lot of talking in this mission, and uh, I do apologize for that. I really don't have any control over it, but there's a lot of great information in this mission. So, uh, first things first, we've got to head to the uh, second class entrance. So, we're going to make our way uh, forward, and as you can see, there's a part of the shell plating or um, the roof pretty much draped over the side of the ship here, and it's very interesting to see. Um, but as you can see, we're going to be making our way up here, and um, we are going to be heading to the second class entrance. And there you can see a crane completely ripped apart there, but um, you should see the second class entrance right over here. There it is. So let's go ahead and uh, basically just stop here, load the lights, and uh, get the ROV out. All right, so we just got to keep moving this way. And then we'll get a photo, so, um, All right. yeah. I'm at the second class entrance. It's not in great shape. The walls of the entrance are propping the equipment up, but it's leaning to port and unstable. Be careful not to get too close when taking the photograph. Right. So as you can see, it's, um, it's very damaged and it's torn apart pretty badly there. So let's go ahead and grab a photo. Done. There we go. Where to next? Next up is the starboard A deck crane, just aft of here. I've updated your map and mission log. I'll head there now. I didn't realize any cranes survived on the stern. Yeah. This is the only one still attached. It was electric, like the other cranes on board, and was used to access the number four hatch on B deck. The stern holds four, five, and six were mostly used for storing third-class baggage and refrigerated food supplies. Right. 
All right, so we're gonna be heading to that crane that we just saw earlier. So we're just gonna quickly flip around here to get that picture. So let's go right over here and uh, let's get the ROV out. All right, so we're almost there here. All right, there we I go. Got the crane. I'll get the camera ready. All right, so let's grab a picture. Oh, that looks great. All right, here we go. Done. There we are. Great. On to the aft mast. Like the foremast, the aft mast has collapsed. But you'll see it's fallen to port and leaning over the edge of the B deck hull. Leaning to port? Was that from the impact? The stern was spiraling as it landed, and everything shifted to port, including the upper decks. It's more noticeable from the starboard side, but you can see the sea deck second class promenade windows don't line up with the lower deck walls by about three meters. I had no idea the impact was so violent. Yeah. The stern was traveling at roughly 60 kilometers per hour when it hit the ground. A lot of debris trailed out of the stern as it spun, and the jagged edges of the exposed decks were folded back or peeled off. The implosion damage had blown out the walls and sides, so the upper decks were lacking supports and collapsed on top of each other as it landed. The only reason the stern has some structure now is the watertight bulkheads remain. Yeah, so that is true. The impact caused most of the decks that were part of the superstructure to actually shift over from their original position. And uh, we'll be able to see that a little later when we actually do the sandbox mode. And that will be in VR. So let's go ahead and line up the sub here to get a good image. So we're just going to go over here. We are level, so all we have to do is just swing around. And you can see that's part of the mast there. And uh, the mast wasn't made out of wood here. Only the top portion of it was, I believe. But uh, most of the mast was actually made out of metal. So here we go. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, get the ROV out. Oh, that looks amazing. Let's grab a photo right here. I don't know if it'll actually give us an accomplishment for that, but um, there we go. Taken. Is it just me or does this mast look shorter than the foremast? This aft mast is slightly shorter than the full mast. Only the bottom section of both masts remains. The top 4.5 meters were teak and have since disintegrated. Okay, what's next? We're heading aft again. Over to the starboard side this time. I'll mark it on your map. What should I be looking for? We're moving towards a piece of decking, sticking up out of the collapsed decks. A loose section of the well deck fell fast enough that it managed to slice through the decks just forward of watertight bulk head O. Alright, so let's go ahead and look for that section. Um, it looks like it's all the way across to here. The exposed joists on top can pose a threat for the ROV. Make sure you don't get too close. Right, I'll keep my distance. Right. Why is the decking here collapsed so much more than the port side? This area suffered massive implosion damage. The stern still had pockets of air as it sank, and the outside pressure increased to a point where the surrounding water forced its way into these pockets. The implosion was powerful enough to strip away all the cabin walls and supports from this area, leaving the decks to collapse on top of each other. Survivors reported hearing underwater explosions. Do you think that was the stern imploding? Yeah, that's the current opinion. Ships don't go down quietly. Okay, what's next? We've been asked to recover a tile from the decking just aft of here. There is a small pile of tiles from the third class general room, and we can grab one from the top of the pile. So yeah, you can see a lot of tiles just around here, and this would be roughly where okay. the third class general Found room is. I just need to pick it up by holding down either the left or right mass button to interact. All right, so yeah, you can see the tile there. I'm just angling the light so you can get a nice view of it here. And now we'll go ahead and deploy the ROV. And uh, we'll just head down here and pick it up. So as you can see, there's a lot of tiles around here, but this is going to be the one. So here we go. Okay, you should put the tiles in the Predator storage then. 
Just open and close the menu again by pressing and releasing the info button. The tile will appear in the ROV's inventory as a selectable item, and you'll have your hands free again. Right. So, this tile was originally from the general room. Was that near here? Yeah. The third class general and smoking rooms were at the very aft of the stern, just under the poop deck. We'll pass them as we head over to the port side propeller. Right. The general room was used as a covered communal space for families and friends to talk and enjoy music, similar to the open space in the bow. The smoking room next door was strictly for men and was somewhere they could relax and order a drink. If passengers wanted a bit of fresh air, they could head out onto the well deck. The destruction wasn't limited to the top of the ship. The propellers were bent up at an angle of 20 degrees. The correct position of the propeller is 7 meters below ground level. The stern was traveling at about 60 to 80 kilometers per hour and spun 2.5 rotations before hitting the ocean floor. Decks were bent back and the sides aren't connected. The sides must have come apart on the way down because they're bent too far out to be damaged from the impact. The central propeller has been thought to be a four-blade like Olympics, but Harland and Wolf records show a three-blade was fitted to Titanic. There are no photographs of Titanic's propellers, only Olympics. Poop deck was covered by the peeled back section, exposing the decks below. The well deck was damaged by implosions, Dr. Ballard left a remembrance plaque on the poop deck, next to a stern capstan. Let's see if we can get a picture of this propeller. Alright, so let's just angle up the camera here, get a nice little um, photo of the propeller. Alright, that should do. Let's go ahead and grab a photo here. Okay, there we finish. go. We are nearing the end of our dive. We have a couple of more tasks to complete before returning to the surface. Right. What's next? We have a special assignment from a company called VR Education, who are currently building a virtual model of the Titanic shipwreck. Whoa, the entire wreck? Yeah. Well, most of it. They wanted to create the model so that new generations of kids and adults will be able to explore the wreck long after it's gone. She's been sitting here on the bottom of the ocean for over a century now, and is expected to disappear by 2030, thanks to hungry bacteria eating at her hull and slowly dissolving her. Yeah, it really is sad. It'll soon be just a memory. But this sounds like a worthwhile project. What's the assignment they've asked for? The developers at VR Education have asked us to place a plaque on the stern next to the one Dr. Ballard placed back in the 80s. The plaque is in your ROV inventory, ready to be placed. Okay. Where's Dr. Ballard's plaque located? Ballard placed the plaque between two roller fair leads on the extreme aft starboard side of the stern. I will mark the location on your map. Okay. Thanks, Jean. I'm on my way now. Great. Once you've placed it, please take a photo so we can send it to the people at VR Education. Alright, so apparently, uh... Titanic VR exists within Titanic VR. Very interesting. Let's go ahead and place that plaque there, and uh, we'll be able to see Robert Ballard's here in just a second. So as you can see, there it is. And, um, yep, let's go ahead and place the plaque there. And let's go ahead and grab a photo as well. And I think this will be the last photo that we will ever take on the wreck in this game that is in the storyline. So here we go. Photo taken. The plaque reads, this plaque is dedicated to the memory of all those who lost their lives on the sinking of RMS Titanic on the 15th of April, 1912. This plaque is located on the ship's final area of refuge before she plunged into the depths of the icy ocean. May those who perished find peace at their eternal destination. Very poignant. It's sad to know that many of the victims on that tragic night spent their last few moments clinging to life in this very spot. It was the last part of Titanic to submerge. Yeah, I can't imagine what it would have been like. This whole trip was a big honor. I feel like this one's gonna stick with me. Me too. It was a pleasure guiding you on your dives, Dr. Lynch. 
I hope we can get to do this again someday. Don't mention it. You performed brilliantly. Yeah, I think it's time to call it a day. Let's hope we get some funding to come back here in the future. I'm sure there's a lot more to be discovered. Me too. Just hit the autopilot to return to the ship. All right, this is it. The last objective is to activate the autopilot and head back up to the surface. So here we go. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.